Well, now for the first of the two group judging of the evening. We're starting with the working group. We've also got the pastoral group to come. But these dogs, well, they are real specialists in their field. We're going to see a real array of dogs out here. Many in their line of work with guard dogs or search and rescue dogs have been bred over centuries to help humans uh, go about our lives and, and in our work. Many famous breeds we're going to see, like St. Bernard's, Great Danes and Boxers. Frank, are you looking forward to this one? Very much so. I mean, it's a really a functional working group, yes. Many of them helped man in their daily lives, but then treated as livestock, then became domesticated as family pets. That's how most of them lived their days. And we're welcoming our judge out into the middle of the arena. This is Anne Ingram from Ireland. She's from Ireland, now lives near Cork. She's second generation dog breeder and judge. Both of her parents were judges, her father a professional handler. She's been heavily involved since childhood with boxers, toy poodles, and a Boston Terrier, known all over the world. And here come the first of the dogs. It's the Alaskan Malamute. The Bernese Mountain Dog comes out as well, best of breed. And here's the Bouvier de Flander, the cattle herder from the Netherlands and Belgium. Our next the boxer. the boxer hails from Germany, a smooth coated, very family friendly dog. And now we have the bull mastiff. The bull mastiff, always a big roar for them. Such wonderful family companions. The this one is Eskimo the ancient dog. sled dog of the Canadian Arctic, the Canadian Eskimo dog. One of the Hello, rarer Brandon. breeds in the group. And here comes the Doberman, one of the most popular breeds in the group. This very smart, handsome, clean-cut outline. And now the Dog de Bordeaux. The Dog de Bordeaux. This is one that's on the category three of the breed watch list. It's meant that it's had to have passed a veterinary inspection in order now to come through to this group pincher. judging as best of breed. And here's the German Pincher, all-purpose farm dog. And here we have the giant Schnauzer. Well, this is a dog of great stamina, the giant Schnauzer. Very impressive. Now we have our Great Dane best of breed. And the Brindle Great Dane. More accustomed to seeing the fawn ones winning and this our one. Great Swiss mountain a Brindle. Dog is next. Great Swiss Mountain Dog, the largest of the Swiss herding breeds. Now we have the Greenland Dog. And here's a story of functional <laughs> dogs. The Greenland Dog. <laughs> a, li a little off charter on his course across and the now ring we there. Have the the hub of art. German Talking farm dog, line. yes. Now in the room we have the Leonberger. And here's the Leonberger. Handsome, lion-like in its colours. Followed by the Mastiff. The Mastiff comes out uh, another. It is on the vulnerable uh, native breed list and on breed watch. And now the Neapolitan Mastiff. And here is the Neapolitan Mastiff, hailing from Italy and going back to the times of the Roman Empire. Our next best of breed is the Newfoundland. Well, this is the biggest in terms of number of entries, beating off 173 other Newfoundlands to be best and of now breed. We have the Portuguese water dog. Another versatile dog, the Portuguese water dog. They do a variety of tasks from fishermen to farmers. Now we have the Rottweiler. A familiar breed, popular in the arena, the Rottweiler, used by the armed forces and the police a lot. And here, one of the most modern breeds, the Russian Black Terrier. Our next best breed is the St Bernard. An iconic breed, the St Bernard, iconic mountain rescue dog and the national dog of Switzerland. And now we have the Siberian Husky. <laughs> The speediest of the sled dogs, the Siberian Husky. Now, please welcome the Tibetan Mastiff. Wow, this is an impressive breed, isn't it? The uh, Tibetan Mastiff. And does it not look impressive and foreboding with that ruff of hair around its collar? Yeah. And uh, from the import register, the Entelbusha Mountain Dog. This is the smallest of the Swiss herding breeds. So it's notable, Frank, now we've seen all the best of breeds, there is an enormous array of variety we've seen amongst these working dogs. All shapes and sizes and, and substance, depending on the job they were designed to do. 
but that Judge Anne Ingram, very experienced, has traveled and judged all over the world, taking her time, taking in the outline of the dogs, the first sign of breed type, that they have the right, correct shape and balance for the breed. And always comparing to the breed standard. Every dog compared, and she's trying to find the one who's closest to it, closest to perfection, and also performing on the night. Performance counts at this level. So with the entry into the ring have counted when the straight line wasn't quite kept to. Look at the imp how impressive is that Tibetan Mastiff. I mean, and next to it, the smallest of the end. not be more of a contrast, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Little and large, yes. So we get a closer look to start with. It's the Alaskan Malamute here. This is the strongest of the sled dogs used for pulling heavy loads over great distances. So it's not speedy, but it's got great stamina. Everything is functional about it. The thick coat for insulation, the, the long tail like a waving plume, a strong head, strong shoulders for pulling the load and very strong hind quarters. That thick double coat will protect it in all weathers, particularly the cold weather, and it's very happy to sleep outdoors in, in all conditions. And, and the, the long tail is functional because you can wrap itself round the dog to keep it warm in the snow. The Bernese Mountain Dog, developed in Switzerland and taking its name from the canton of Bern. It's bred to pull carts for the weavers. Also a general farm dog, herding sheep and cattle and pulling milk and cheese carts back in the day. It used to be known as the cheese factory dog because it used to take the cheeses in a cart to the station. But they are hugely popular in, in, in the native Sweden as... as uh, in Switzerland as house companions but on national holidays there's often a parade through the town of the dogs with their carts and the owners in national dress that's a, that's how popular they are in Switzerland and a wonderful sight to see this is four-year-old Chirac And here's the Bouvier de Flanders. This is a cattle dog, for centuries was also used as a cart puller and as a guard dog. But in its native lands, it used to herd cattle and it's built for stamina and strength. That thick matte coat, a strong skull, strong bone, and that, the judge going over, feeling its rib cage, its substance, looking at its shoulders, which allow it to move well. Going over the confirmation. And that coat, Breed Standard talks about it being so thick that you could barely see the skin if you try to separate it with your fingers. Yes, it's a really hard, dense, hard and dense coat. Of course, they are versatile, they've been used by the armed forces, they're excellent tracking dogs, highly intelligent. The boxer hails from Germany, smooth-coated, family-friendly, very loyal to its owners, known as a, a fearless dog with a guarding instinct. See that square build, very strong-boned. And of course, Anne and her parents have bred many champion boxers, so she'll be looking at this with a specialist side. Does that work in its favour or against it? Should be looking for the extra details. This one I see a very young dog winning its first big award today, only 14 months old. Yes, this is Tucker. This is the pet name. Hind quarters should be strong and hard muscles standing out under the skin. They, they were, a lot of them came over after the Second World War, brought by uh, returning soldiers from the wars when they became popular in, in England. And here is the Bull Mastiff. 
As its name suggests, it hails from the crossing of a bulldog with the mastiff, and it was used as the gamekeeper's night dog to protect country estates from poachers. Again, we will see the, the strong head, athletic build. It's got good length of leg. Apart from having substance and courage, it had to be athletic. To gallop, it said a good bull mastiff can clear a five-barred gate. Quite a few fans in the arena here tonight. So the combination of su substance and athleticism. And gamekeepers used to prefer the brindle colour for camouflage. They were, they, so the, the poachers could get a nasty shock when a, when a dark dog came out of the undergrowth to get them. They're a wonderful breed. Three-year-old Gwen, this is. Canadian Eskimo dog is the ancient sled dog of the Canadian Arctic, really built for distance work rather than speed. You probably see this in the way the dog is built, again, all about being fit for function. This is a story of survival because it was the traditional sled dog, but along came the Siberian, which was faster, and so this fell out of popularity. So the Canadian government have set up a breeding station to keep the breed going. Again, everything's functional about it. The coat, inside the ears furred, the long tail. It's, it's sturdily built, but quite athletic. They've been very at home in the sort of weather we've had in Birmingham the last few days. <laughs> but I think they're used to something a little bit harder than <laughs> that, yes. What a wonderful outline, that square outline with a slightly sloping top line, deep chest of this Doberman. Comes from a famous kennel, and uh, they've been very successful, but this is beautiful quality, that the handler going over the confirmation, this wedge-shaped head, lovely clean neck and shoulders, give it this elegance and athleticism. It's recognized by the German Kennel Club back in 1899, and it's very loyal and obedient. And it good as a family dog. Takes its name from its in the man who developed it, Herr Louis Doberman. He was a tax collector and wanted a dog as a companion when he was going on his round collecting the debts. So, uh, so it was bred to work and bred to guard. The judge there will be looking for elastic sort of gait, very well balanced with a strong drive from the rear. But of course now there's not many debt collectors, I hope, that have Dobermans. Dog de Bordeaux. Now this one is a category three on the breed watch list, which is where the veterinary inspection has to be passed. It means that judges are paying particular attention to make sure there are no visible health problems prior to coming through as best of breed. So this this is a French Mastiff. It's thought it's got some, it's a cousin of the Bull Mastiff, very popular in the 18th century with the nobles of France. In the French Revolution, many of them were killed along with their owners. Very powerful and sturdy breed. That head is so distinctive. And so is the head carriage. On the move, it drops its head to a lower level. And here is the German Pincher. It's thought that the German pincher was developed from the French, the French word pincer, meaning to rip. It was a vermin dog, so it had to use its teeth, strong jaw, an all-purpose farm dog. It was used to keep down vermin in the stables and the barns. It's the middle size of pincer. We see the miniature pincher in the toy group and the giant. And we've just seen the Doberman pincher, all the same shape. They're square, slightly sloping in top line, so it's all out of the same mould. And will the judge be paying any attention to the little shakeouts? Just no, then? no, that's just, that's just a natural dog thing. He's doing a dog thing, Happy yes. Happy behaviour. I'm always surprised they've not become more popular as house companions. There's e easy keep, easy maintenance, very little grooming and great temperaments. Well, this is a dog of great stamina and, and endurance, bred originally to drive cattle in Munich, the giant schnauzer. It's a breed that doesn't shed as well, so it makes it rather house-friendly. Tends to work in cities now, makes a very good police dog or a tracking dog. 
And this, this one comes from a famous kennel, the Philoma kennel. This is Kevin Cullen handling it tonight. He won Best in Show at Crufts a few years ago, um, and he's maintained a very successful kennel. This, again, the Schnauzer, it has, underneath that coat, there's a lot of substance and good chest. Striding out nicely. And here is the Great Dane, described as the Apollo of dogs, but his name's a bit of a misnomer. He's not re really a Dane, he's a German breed. It's thought he descends from boarhounds in Germany, and some people think he should be a, still a scent hound. So. Notable this action, Frank, for such a big dog, has a very springy action, and the, the head carriage important as well. Yes, and it's supposed to have dash and dare, be ready to go anywhere. It's a mixture of substance and athleticism. He should be square in his build with good length of leg. Breed standard talking about a majestic and almost dignified dog. The great Swiss mountain dog is the largest of the Swiss herding breeds and heaviest in build and shares this typical tricolour markings uh, with the Bernese, but has a much shorter and denser coat and was used to pulling milk and cheese carts as well. So Judge will be looking for the fit for function. Yes, and uh, actually late, late in the 19th century when motor transportation came in and the rural areas, this breed was almost extinct. And it was a Swiss breed enthusiast went into the remote valleys to find some examples of the breed to get the breed going again. So, um, a very, a very even-natured breed, confident around strangers. This one has come from France to win today. The best of breed, Greenland dog. The breed was another working breed just today. And here's the wonderful Greenland dog. It's been protected by its government. It's the only native breed of Greenland. I saw recently a, a documentary on the breed about an Arctic expeditions and expeditions to the north of Norway with teams of this dog. What an amazing film. It just showed how functional they are. They could pull heavy loads for four, four hours. They were given a rest. They're, they're mushers or keepers very devoted to them. They could sleep outside in the hardest of storms, covered in ice, and then have a rest and get up and work again. Uh, wonderful how they were working dogs now domesticated and living with their owners. It's a wonderful story and a wonderful breed as well. Bushy tail should be curled loosely over the back as it is there, falling to one side. We're now looking at the Hoverbart, judged today by Mrs. Bryant, and from her entry of 45. It's a five year old Hoverbart, the German word Hof meaning farm or homestead, and Vart meaning to guard dating back to the Middle Ages, which almost suffered extinction in the 20th century, but was saved and now featuring here at Crufts, popular breed. And they come in a variety of colours, beautiful temperaments, very calm temperaments, and this is a very nice one, really striding out, a lovely black and gold, beautiful top line on it, lovely wedge-shaped head. This is a very nice example of the breed. You know, the distinctive spot over each eye. Can't quite Next see at that angle, the just about there. Beautiful. Kathleen Hay judged the breed today and found her best of breed with his bitch number five seven. And here is the Leonberger. It's the mascot and emblem of the town of Leonberg in southwest Germany. And an outline of this dog can be seen. Uh, they're just going for its the handler, holding a treat for it. He's rather over keen on that. Anyway, it's lion like in its appearance. Leon Burger, Lion Town. It's of lion colours. Gold or shaded gold. It's thought that it was developed from a crossing with the St. Bernard and the Newfoundland. You can see that distinctive black mask on the face, the, the mane over the neck and chest, part of the breed standard, and the back should be firm and straight with a long, broad rump, double-coated. And this one has come from Cyprus to win at Crufts. When the Romans invaded Britain in 55 BC, 
and, and here is the Mastiff. And this is what used to be called the Old English Mastiff, and it goes back to the times, at least to the time of the Roman invasion of England. Roman soldiers matched their own dogs with the Mastiff in fighting matches, and when they returned to Rome, they took some, and some of them actually had to fight in the Colosseum, which was very sad. However, they were used by gamekeepers to ward off poachers, and this was their favorite color, as you said, Ali, camouflaged in brindle. They also come in fawn. Now, the, again, it's got substance, but it should also be sound and athletic. And there's another breed that's registered category three, the breed watch, meaning the judges always looking for any excessive skin or wrinkling. It's had to have passed a veterinary inspection in order to be confirmed as best of breed. So he'll have been checked for his eyes and his skin and his soundness. The Neapolitan Mastiff, again, the characteristic loose skin over the head and body, but it must not be uh, in excess. You have to see these thick and fleshy lips. It's a very devoted and vigilant breed. And again, it goes back to the times of the Roman invasions and the Roman legions. It's said that dogs of this type led the legions into battle, often wearing metal spiked collars. That would be a pretty, pretty off-putting sight for the enemy, wouldn't it? The, the breeders have worked very hard to rid it of the extreme exaggerations. When I saw them 30 years ago in Italy, they were a sorry sight with too much skin, too much exaggeration. Now we're trying to get to healthier dogs with less skin, sound, cleaner eyes. The breeders are working hard on this. Actually met this dog just before coming into the show ring and mi closely missed out on being best of breed before, so delighted to be here. 20-month-old Unica. There were 174 of them here today for Judge Mr. John Burroughs. The Newfoundland, the biggest number of entries amongst the pastoral group, 174 of them. So 173 beaten off uh, by this two and three quarter year old pet name Soldier. And coming up from a very good kennel, the Sand Bears Kevin of Suzanne Blake, who lives near Halifax, Greekland. And she's had lots of good winners, but this is a young dog looking very good today. The Newfoundlands and the ultimate working dog, versatile. It was a water retrieving, water rescue. It could pull in fishing nets in its native Newfoundland, helping the fishermen. It was also a carting dog. They're built for versatility. They're big ribs under that to give it flotation, give it stamina in the water, strong feet and a weatherproof coat. There should be an oiliness to the coat and the judge will look at that, a waterproof oiliness to it. And those large feet as well with webbing to help it move through the water. Dr. Margaret Buckley, judge the Portuguese and here's the Portuguese water dog, a, a, a distinctive outline with a plume on its tail and the tail arched over its loin. That's very correct for the breed. Underneath that coat, there's a versatile water dog. This, again, used to help fishermen hauling in the nets, often driving shoals of fish into the nets. Amazing how dogs can be trained for a variety of tasks. It's also sometimes used as messenger dogs, taking messages between boats when they're out at sea. So it's a sturdy dog under that coat, a strong skull and muzzle, good bone, good chest, rather short and compact in the neck, and again that tail arched over the neck with a plume on for protection of the extreme end of the day. And the judge have been looking for some lightness in that trot. Lively stepping. And now we see the Rottweiler judge today by... Well, the Rottweiler, known as a territorial dog. It's very protective of its owner and their property. It's sometimes had a bit of bad press in the past if it's not owned and managed responsibly, but this is a really intelligent and courageous dog who can make an excellent family companion. Used a lot in the armed forces and by the police because of uh, those protecting instincts. Uh, and again, it's thought that this dog was was brought by the Romans into Germany. The, the Roman armies used to take cattle with them for food, and these were the herding dogs they used. When they went to the town of Rottweil in Germany, they left some of the ancestor of this behind, and that's how it was developed. Judge will be looking for supple strength and endurance in that the movement. Breed to be seen by Annie is the Russian Black Terrier. 
were judged today by SNN, who comes from Norway. And here is the Russian Got Black Terrier, a relatively S -S 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 modern breed. It first appeared at a show in Moscow in 1955, and it was purposely bred after World War II by the Russian, Russian Army Breeding Station. Russian they wanted a guard dog who could handle the extreme climates and terrain and to, to round up prisoners of war. A large, imposing breed, but a weatherproof coat again, a key feature. Somewhere under there, some heavy eyebrows and the, and the beard as well, a very distinctive feature. And I can tell you there's great substance, that the bone is so strong in the legs you can hardly get your hand round it. Big rib cage, this coat which is trimmed to show off its shape. Thought that it was its, its ancestors were the giant schnauzer and the Airedale and the Rottweiler. Zena Thorne Andrews judged the St Bernard's today, and from an entry of 58, best of breed was highly recognisable breed, the iconic mountain rescue dog and national dog of Switzerland. This the St Bernard, and it is a dog of great substance and courageous and kind in its temperament, able to cover all sorts of difficult terrain. See that large head, property. muscular body. In fact, the circumference of the head should be changed. more than double its length. The of the and this one coming from the famous Shandimore Kennel. Certainly. This is Brendan the Deegan, the co-owner handling today. Coat. What I like about this, it, it trots along on a loose lead, obviously time. devoted to its handler. Again, it's a tall dog, substantial dog, but how light on its feet. Light on its feet, easy in its movement, retaining a perfect top line. That's a sign of good balance in the confirmation. You'd be very happy to see this coming to rescue, preferably with a little barrel of brandy, but that's a bit, of, nice. that's a bit of folklore, I think. From a strong entry of 161, Stunning outline of the Siberian Husky, which is the lightest and fastest of all the sled dogs. Plenty of fur on that body, a soft, dense undercoat to support the outer coat and pricked ears and bushy tail, like a fox brush. Again, absolutely functional. They are the lightest of them, as you say, but they've got stamina and strength, apart from this lightness. Double-coated, a tail, a long tail to protect it when it curls up. I've seen a, a whole load of them sleeping out in Finland in harsh weather. Amazing sight. Developed by the Chukchi Eskimos. They were often known as the Chukchi sled dog before they became more national. Like many breeds, they start off locally and then they became famous and spread worldwide. Judged today by Jeff Horswell. And here, what a picture, the Tibetan Mastiff. It's thought that the Tibetan Mastiff is father, the patriarch of all the Mastiff breeds, the most ancient. It's thought that they were, they were bred originally in the Himalayas to guard the farms, often chained up at the entrance of farms. And here, this is a, obviously a masculine, impressive dog with this mane of hair over its neck and shoulders. We're winning lots of fans in the arena tonight and extraordinarily impressive. Impressive, that tail loosely curled over again to one side. And the legs, when you look from behind, should be parallel. And again, it's a big dog, but how light on its feet and holding its shape. And this one has come from France to win today. So a lot of international winners in the group tonight, Ali. Powerful and free, moving with real purpose and that agility you speak of, Frank. And, and wonderfully accurate in its front movement, coming towards us with those straight legs. Fantastic. And she found her best import register breed with this Entelbucher. And here dog. is the Entelbucher Mountain Dog coming from the import register. Uh, sorry, it's had its cl first classes at the show this year. So this is a, a first for the breed. It's had breed classes here for the first time. And this is the winner. What a great moment for it and for the breed here. This is the smallest of the tricolour Swiss herding dogs. Sometimes has it born with a naturally bob the tail, this one the full tail. Again, they were herding dogs, could also be used for carting and keeping down vermin on the farms. So this is three-year-old Betty, agile, alert and a clever breed, said to be self-assured and fearless. Can be a really great family dog, but also a little suspicious of strangers. So 
having concluded the preliminary examination of all the working group best of breeds... So our judges class. had a close look our at all of these best of breeds in the working group. 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 Who, though, will go through to best in show on group. Sunday? So let's show a round of applause for all of our working breeds here in the main ring. They've had a long day and they're all showing us magnificently. Well, okay. it's a very impressive group. There's some lovely dogs here. So she's going to have a hard task scan. Again, she'll, she'll be reminding herself of what she found on her hands-on examination, going under the coat, feeling the confirmation. And of course, she'll be thinking, are they fit for the function for which so they were bred? That's a key element in the breed line. standards. What are you expecting? A short list of maybe seven, eight? Eight, eight dogs, perhaps, out of this. A very clean-cut outline of the Newfoundland there. I love the way the St. Bernard went so willingly and obviously so f devoted to its owner. But what an impressive Tibetan Mastiff. So, Anne, having completed her walk along of course, the, the judge line, can't be swayed by cheers from the, the arena the because no, there's no, always some popularity. It's not judged on the clapometer. <laughs> And of course, the rarer breeds that the, the judge needs a, a, a good knowledge of the finer points of all the breed standards. You can hear a pin drop. Who will be picked out? So Anne has a fantastic lineup of working breeds. She's very sensible, she's standing back, she's surveying the whole group to think which are the eight I like best, and then she'll bring them out. That's the, that's the key. Take your time, look at the whole arena, and then decide. There's some movement. In comes the Alaskan Malamute. This is three-year-old Zane. The Bouvier comes in, and the Doberman Pincher. The Doberman. In comes the Great Dane. The great Dane. <laughs> now, down the line, where's she going next? Ah, okay, the Rottweiler comes in. The Russian Black Terrier. And the, the ah, the Russian, Russian Black Terrier and the... Ah, uh, the St. Bernard Mastiff. and the Tibetan so Mastiff. What, what an impressive line up there. Show your appreciation and congratulate all the other there, there's our lineup, our shortlist for the group. Well, an impressive lineup it is as well, and warm applause for all those best of breeds who now exit the arena, but we've really been treated this evening. You can see the density of that coat in the Alaskan Malamute there, we a glimpse of it. So now a chance for I'll judge Anne Ingram to have another look. She, she'll be sending them out and back to check the strength in the hops and the rear movement to watch the, the four, four legs coming towards her, parallel and straight, sign of sound movement. And round he goes. She'll be looking here for the extension of the front legs and the firm top line held on the move. And the tail should be like a waving plume, and it's putting on a good show of the waving plume there. Three-year-old Zane. So the Bouvier de Flandre. This is Brookshi, three years age. of age Five from seven. Hungary. And come all the way from Hungary. It's the correct shape for the breed. Compact, slightly sloping in its top line, and that dense matte coat. Round he goes. That's our best Enjoying greatest Flandre. success in showing Great. at Crufts today. And Highlights. A, a, like all functional working dogs, really striding out. Economical movement, covering the ground with minimum effort. And here, the square outline and elegance and muscular power of the Doberman champion Manzart wise guy from a famous kennel a few the years ago they were third in the working the group with a, a, a female from their kennels this is, the male this is Archie one, who's nearly one. four years old male dog from Chichester the way that 
tail is curling. And comes into natural balance when so he stands. A sign of good confirmation. Standing four seven square. One. This one of black and tan. They'll also come in rust, a, a, a brown colour with, with tan. And there the elegant outline of the, the Great, Great Dane. Dane. To Not quite three Guy years old yet, two King. years and 11 months. This is Guy, this is pet name five, from five, Matlock in five, Derbyshire. Eight. Top winner in the breed for last year. And he's the now, he's the top winning brindle in the history of the breed in this country. Usually we see the fawns winning. This kennel has had a lot of fawn champions. Adam here and his and mother Adam Leslie have always nine. wanted a good brindle. The They've got him in Wise Guy. Five, four, yes. Five, Saw him winning in the breed today, very popular. The Rottweiler. And here's oh, another Rottweiler. big winner and a big winning kennel. Liz Dunhill yeah, handling the Fantasia kennel. Many champions in the breed, not only in this breed, but in other, the Japanese breeds that she keeps. The Shiba Inu, look at this, look at that for natural balance. Look at the alertness on it. The ring goes well, she breed, describes him as mummy's best boy. <laughs> well, she, she has a wonderful lot, bond. She has a lot of best boys. She has a lot of champions in yeah. this breed. Very good handler, gets the best out of them, as does her daughter. And here, the impressive Russian Black Terrier. And the next one on the short list to be moved again is the Russian now. Black Terrier. An unpronounceable so name, so I'm glad it's on the screen for us, us yes. But name. again, underneath that coat, this a lot dog. of dog. It has to have. Seven. Courageous temperament, strong bone and substance, and this coat which sets it off. Coming from the Airedale, and this the one Rottweiler. Travelled yeah. from Poland four years, four years old. Pet name is Car. Champion dog, champion of Poland. And our two and a half year old St. Bernard Mandy. And so female dog and a champion dog to boot as well. And just, just two and a half Seven years old and winning her fourth five, CC so today. Which means four she need three CCs to become a champion. CCs being championship, champion, uh, champion, uh, certificate. A champion certificate. Challenge certificate, yes. But I, I just love the carriage of this, this bitch. Beautiful condition. You can see the health in the so coat. Light on its feet. Six, this strong two, two, head. Four. Beautiful. They've travelled from Spalding, Lincolnshire. This, the Tibetan Mastiff. Last but not least. Just awe-inspiring in many ways. Yes. Three years old, yeah. Ron Rowe. You, you can imagine it would be very fit for function as a guard dog. It would be very off-putting to anyone who fancied a bit of dodgy work, yes. So, again, the tail carried in a plume. A weatherproof coat. He's had to survive the extremes of climate in the heights of the Himalaya. Yeah, he was best of breed crofts in 2022. He's travelled from France. And he's won champion titles in seven countries. That's amazing. So each of our Wonderfully sound on the move. It's fantastic. Breeds, having been judged by well, to what extent has the Betton Mastiff on impressed our judge, Anne Ingram? Very soon. She will take her time again and have a, another close look at each of her shortlisted dogs in this working group. So there are four places to be awarded and of course the winner will go through to best in show on Sunday. Just checking the head, the strength in the head of the Russian Black Terrier. Looking at the head sure, proportions of the St. Bernard. Fantastic working breeds in front of us. Another chance the expression, a forbidding round. expression of the Tibetan Mastiff. So, big cheers and round of applause from the, the crowd here. I think it's caught the imagination of the crowd, this impressive dog. However, it's not about the clap on meter, it's Anne's it choice. Really Which dog most closely fits the breed standard, fit for function, picture of health? We have the award boards in place. Place so best in show at Crofts. Decision, we, waiting. A tense, Winner tense moment. Where is she Crush coming? 2023 is. 
It's the Doberman. The, the, the Doberman, Doberman has Five won Manza Wise Guy. Oh, that's a fantastic win for the breed. This is Archie. He, he is an Aubrey, years old. An Aubrey's Best in Show winner already. Can he pull it off at Profits this year? In second place, where is it going? Oh, look, look, look. It's the Tibetan Mastiff. That'll be a popular choice, Frank. It really will be. <laughs> Well, that is wonderful for Ron Rowe, the three-year-old. They came from France, and they've got a runner-up in the working group. I think it's the Russian Black Terrier, another of those forbidding guard dogs, the Russian Black, very impressive. And for fourth spot, look at that, I'm very happy to go out there where we're going. The Alaskan Malamute is in fourth place. Snowshoes, who dares wins? Well, he did today. <laughs> He dared and he won. Well, he's come in fourth place. Well, we have our winner of the working group and a place best in show on Sunday night. It is our Doberman who goes through four year, nearly four-year-old Archie from Chichester. Cool as a cucumber, not phased at all by the big ring atmosphere and the applause. Bodes well for a bigger, bigger occasion on Sunday. Huge congratulations to the winner of the Working Group Press 2020. Mandy Everly and Nick Hughes are the owners with Mandy out here in the ring now, getting a little bit excited. I, that, I, think, I think it's, it's spotted, a trophy. <laughs> I, I think it's spotted perhaps a camera, a camera angle has got it. And that's Irene McManus who's presenting the trophy, very fitting as she is a breeder of Dobermans. So, it's the, the low, I think the low level camera has caught the dog's attention. He's, uh, <laughs> so. So. Well, there's a few things you're not used to in an arena sometimes, aren't they? Well, he's got, got, I think the trophy's now catching his eye. <laughs> yes. Instead, but he's been well, so, well calm. So, Irene McManus, how fitting as a, a Doberman breeder is so handing out the trophy it, tonight. Hello, gentlemen, here on day two. Hello, Mandy. Hello, can I just, hello. <laughs> Is uh, your Doberman just doing what it's bred to do there, is protect you? But he's a bit shocked, a um, bit camera shy. <laughs> I tell you what, if you don't mind, can I take that from you? It's very nice. And you've also come dressed in red today. Uh, did you think you were going to actually do this well? No, no, really, I didn't. I came for the stakes class actually yesterday, um, just to be in the ring again. Um, so today is just dream come true. And my mum would be very proud. She's up there and she taught me everything I know. So. <laughs> well, what's his pet name? Archie. Well, Archie looks very, very proud. As long as he doesn't put any dribble on my jacket, that's fine. <laughs> but I'm going to send you on your lap of honour. We'll think of your mum as we're doing it. And we can't wait to see you for Best in Show on Sunday night. Many congratulations, Mandy and Archie.